Seriously, fuck DLCs. New content, of course, is always sweet, but I don't see me paying 15 bucks for a handful of mediocre maps when I already paid for the main game, and I especially dislike it when I spend 60 euros or dollars on the main game, and then to fully enjoy the multiplayer with all the others out there, I have to buy like 6 DLCs? Screw that! That's why I ultimately didn't buy Star Wars Battlefront, even though I gave it a somewhat favorable review in the open beta phase. And now hearing that they are already working on Star Wars Battlefront 2 got me to say I won't play it. Unless I get it for free, but never spend a penny on it. Battlefield 1. I seriously love the concept. And seeing Snoop Dogg playing it definitely made me want it even more. But I also know that EA will flood the market with DLCs. And will we get a level editor? Probably not. Remember back in the days when games had add-ons? Real add-ons that featured substantial stuff, not merely just a little DLC with few maps or a reskin for a dog. Oh yeah, skins used to be a free thing, remember? Sure, others couldn't see them, but still, it was free and community-made. Let's take an example that suits this channel. Some of you will remember the time before Valve released Steam and you had to find your enemies through the World Opponent Network. Back then, Half-Life Opposing Force was not a standalone, it required the original Half-Life to run. Even though it was just an add-on, it featured a completely new single player, including an innovative replacement for the Hazard course and an enhanced multiplayer experience. And in addition to that, completely new weapons and enemies. <sighs> Back then, they knew how to do it. In my time, everything was better. Well, maybe Grandpa is right, but let's not only focus on the past. There are developers who do it right today. And I very much respect them for that. Usually these are developers that started out as a mod team and aren't long enough in the business to have forgotten about their roots. So away from studios that just milk the franchises for cash and don't give a shit about long-lasting communities. That's right, I am talking to you, EA. And yes, I know, Valve was kind of milking the CSGO franchise with skins, but that is different from selling maps or weapons. And also, free-to-play games don't count in this discussion. They have to sell stuff to make a profit in the first place. So Gaijin and War Games, you two are safe. As well as Team Fortress, you too. <laughs> those hats. A prime example for companies who do it right is Valve. Despite the fact that they are selling hats and pink Kalashnikovs, you can seriously complain about what they do, I do it myself. But due to their attitude towards modders and mappers, they managed to create a gigantic community around their games, and I do respect and love them for that. Imagine there would be a new Counter-Strike every year and no possibility to create new maps and other community content. A somewhat horrible scenario, isn't it? Even though I praise Lord Gaben a lot, there are other companies out there that do great work. Tripwire Interactive, for example, the creators of Killing Floor and Orchestra, they have just released new content for Killing Floor 2, for free. The creators of Insurgency basically included a new game into their game. Day of Infamy is a free add-on, and of course both companies offer developer tools. What I basically want to say is, giving free content to the users is awesome, and it shows a company cares about their customers. But even more important than giving free content is giving developer tools to the community. It is a great way to keep a game alive long after its initial release, and more important, it sparks innovation in the gaming industry itself. Don't forget that games like Counter-Strike and Team Fortress were community-made mods, and also games like Battlefield 2 were vastly influenced by mods. Games like Stalker have an incredibly active community for a game that old, and there are new mods coming out all the time. Development tools keep games alive, but I guess for many modern games that is not the goal. A new game every year, every year, more of basically the same. Imagine Call of Duty came out with an SDK in the past years. The game might have spawned of more creative things than sitting in front of an Xbox eating Twizzlers. Sometimes I have the feeling that taking away the ability to be creative dumps down a community. If you are forced to only consume and never participate creatively, gosh, where's the fun in it? That's why I love PC gaming so much. You at least have in theory the ability to change things. That is why Gary's mod was so successful. Sure, console gaming is fun, but to me the most interesting part about the Tony Hawk Pro Skater series was the park editor. <laughs> Pre-order now and get the Nuketown bonus map. Oh, and would you look at that? Nuketown DLC bonus map not offered on Xbox 360 and PS3. <laughs> Pre-order now and get the Dust 2 bonus map. Dust 2 not offered on Windows 7 and Mac OS. <laughs> Let's not talk about pre-ordering today. 
Cartman, would you do me the honors? When you pre-order a game, you're just committing to paying for something that some assholes in California haven't even finished working on yet. You know what you get for pre-ordering a game? A big dick in your mouth. Thank you, Eric. And as always, I am interested in hearing your opinion on the topic. So go on and rock the comment section down below. So see you guys next time. And as always, goodbye and guten tag.